Hello all, so I'm going to be installing this uh, mini split, this Pioneer mini split. So I thought I'd do a video on it and uh, show how to go about installing one of these. You can buy them, on, uh, buy them online, I bought this on Amazon. And I'm going to go through and uh, do a complete setup and install and how, uh, how you could do it. And this is a heat pump, so both heats and cools. So, so this is right here is going to be the main unit. It's uh, the main, uh, sits outside, blows heat or cold away, depending on what mode it's in. This right here is going to be sitting up on the inside on the wall. And this is a line set. It's a copper line that runs around and it's going to have to be run to it between the two units. I, I buy these pads. They're really cheap on, uh, on uh, Amazon. Uh, you could also put it on bricks or put a cement thing, but I'm just going to use one of these cheap, they're pretty hard little pads. That's a, like a, just a personal option. And a few other things you're going to need is uh, I bought this cheap uh, uh, air compressor because it's got to go down to a vacuum. So I think that was one's like 50 bucks. I'll put all the links for all this in the description below. And I got a cheap manifold gauge set. I think these were $30. I, I, again, I, I'll be putting links. And uh, electrical. Now this is the only thing that doesn't come. This does not come with, uh, with the unit. You have to buy this yourself. And uh, you could buy a simple disconnect or I like to put them on 20 amp breakers, which is what they call for. So it's just a, a box. I'm going to be wiring up, and uh, but this does not come with, with this package over here. This is just part of what you'll need uh, for the electrical. And so hopefully this video helps anybody who's wanting to install one of these to see how to do it yourself. As always, be sure to follow the instructions that come with the unit in case anything changes. More than likely not, but uh, you never know. And so uh, uh, basically I'm going to get started right now by installing the electrical. And, uh, I'll be showing the steps as I go, and uh, I'll be right back. All right, so I'm back, and uh, this is where I'm going to be mounting it at. I'm going to be putting it right here, and I'll be running a light set up the wall on a pier somewhere. And uh, I just got done, uh, I'm hooking up the electrical, and uh, I'm, like I said, I put a breaker on these. You can run a disconnect. Uh, most HVAC companies will just have a disconnect that pops in and out for when they, if they work on it. Uh, I'm, I'm putting a 20 amp breaker on it. You can uh, tap into an empty 20 amp breaker on your panel if you have one, which will work the same. Uh, but uh, either way, uh, I like to do a little bit extra safety on these. So, uh, and I, I use this flexible conduit, but you can use uh, PVC or the harder uh, conduit to run up. Electrical panel for me is just right there. So uh, it was pretty easy, pretty simple for me to run. If you're inside the house, you're gonna have a little bit harder. And uh, just marked out AC, really simple run there. But, um, and this unit is a 240 unit. There is some 110, 120 units, so be sure to know what your voltage is. And use a meter. Be sure to call an electrician or somebody who knows uh, how to do electrical work before, uh, if you don't know what you're doing here, it's not something you really wanna play with. But uh, basically, you know, I'm just running it up and into this uh, panel and on both sides here, this unit's 240. So I'm gonna be getting 240 volts coming through this panel when I come through now and I tap onto these bottom ones, I'll have a breaker. It'll flip if anything's wrong. And uh, that's the way you wire up these little boxes. It's pretty simple. But uh, like I said, as far as these go, uh, check out some videos on uh, wiring or call an electrician if you're not sure how to wire up these. But uh, the next step is going to be to, to level up this, this base. If you have a, a cement pad already, or if you, have, if you don't have one of these, then you can use bricks. Uh, it basically just needs to be on something solid and it needs to be level. So uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to dig out a little bit around here and level up this pad so I can set the outside condensing unit on it. All right, so I'm back and I just wanted to show you just want to get this uh, this base all flat, get your uh, get it in the bubble going both ways here. That way it's uh, uh, it's on a flat and uh, steady surface is all you want. If you don't have uh, if you have already have a CMAP outside 
or if you don't have one of these and you want to use block, uh, whatever uh, is good. You just need a solid base that's uh, a level. So the next step is going to be to go ahead and take this, take it this unit out of the box. So I'm going to go ahead and take this all out and put it on there, and I'll show you what's in there too. So I'll be right back. And that's the way the unit sits on uh, the pad. It just sits on there. Uh, I went and took these plates off, these covers, and uh, this is where all the electrical is going to go. Uh, the, the, the voltage is going to come in and our control lines from the inside unit. And we're also going to have to run our high and low pressure uh, lines to the inside unit. So uh, basically, we have to cut a hole in the wall, like uh, three inches with the hole saw, and mount it on the inside, which I'm going to go ahead and start on next. All right, so there's the inside unit out of the box. This is going to be mounted up on a wall, so I'm going to be mounting it up here. It's going to, it just needs to be level. We're going to have to put a three-inch hole through the wall to run the line set and the wires. But this is it right here, and it's, here's all the. It comes with a whole lot of information. You got a owner's manual, you got the installation manual, and always follow this. Whichever one comes with it, uh, uh, whatever one comes with your unit, to be sure. I'm giving you a basic overview how to do this, but always. I always follow the instructions. But uh, this is basically it. It comes with a whole package of things. It comes with a little remote control and a user guide. You even got a couple of batteries in here and, uh, and a mount for the remote controls. So you can mount it on a wall and a bunch of screws to mount it. But the next step is I'm going to go ahead and get this up here and I'm going to have to figure out where to run a hole through the wall to run all the line set and all the wires to the outside. And the first thing we're going to want to do is this back plate needs to come off. It's got a Phillips underneath here. And that just comes off, that, that screw. And that's, this is what holds it on the wall. So that just, you just want to pull that down right there and it pops out like this. But this is what uh, holds it on the wall. So we got to get this. You want to mount this first, the way these go, and uh, so you want to like figure out where you want it. it you, you have to remember that you're going to need like a three-inch hole, two and a half inch. I have to look at the instructions for the exact uh, 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 hole that we need to run the line set and the wires outside. But this needs to be mounted, and you, so we need to find a stud so that the bolts can hold it well and it doesn't come off the wall. And uh, we also can drill. In the correct location our uh three two and a half three inch hole that we need so that's the next step i'm going to look for some studs on the wall and uh drill out the hole all right so i'm done mounting the plate and that's basically it there you just want to uh, mount it so that it's level and uh it's on there solid they do send these little screws with it which i didn't like too much so i put this uh this wood screw uh right on a setter stud the one thing is it's got to be at least 10 inches it's supposed to be from the roof uh, to the top because the air comes in the top is the one thing you don't want to get too high if you got up around eight inches you'd probably be all right but it's supposed to be like 10 inches from the top and then you're going to need a hole to run the line set out so I, i'm using a three inch hole saw and i just drilled straight through uh you might be, be able to get away with a two and a half maybe even a two inch hole but uh i went and run a three inch so that's basically it it's up there and it's mounted and uh so now I need to feed this through. This is the line set from the unit. So this goes through the hole and this right here will I'll just sit on that top clip up there. I don't know if you can see that. And these right here, they just snap. So you, you'll put the top on and it'll sit on the top and the bottom will just snap into those two bottom, uh, bottom pieces down there. When you're bending this, be a little careful with it. It's pretty easy to bend. And uh, if you kink it, the refrigerant won't flow through it too so uh, well, and it'll uh, it'll make it so it doesn't work so well. So just be careful. Try not to kink uh, the copper line set when it goes through. Okay, and for the inside wiring on this unit, this front cover just comes off, it pops up, and I got it laying on its side here because it's easier for me to work on. And it's got a little plate here with one uh, Phillips screw that comes off, and then it pops out. And the wiring, you can see that, just feed it up to the back, up to the front, and it needs to come in right here to these uh, one, where it's labeled one, two, three, and ground. And it's got the schematic right here on the inside of the door, 
And as you can see, it's got red going to one. Well, hopefully you can see that. But anyway, it's got red going to one. It's got black or blue going to two. And yellow and three. And uh, yellow green one going to ground on the inside unit. Unfortunately, the cable, the wires they sent me are a little different in uh, color code. So I'm just going to have to watch that when I go outside. If the same thing happens to you, it's no big deal. It's just make sure they match when they go outside. So uh, I'm going to go and wire this up. Be sure to follow the instructions. Look at the instructions for yours because yours might, you know, these come in 110, 115, 230 units. As you can see, the instructions are inside the instruction manual. Plus, they got it labeled right there on the inside of the door. So whatever you do, be sure to follow, be sure to follow the wiring schematics that come with your unit. All right, and to just give you a quick shot, that's the way I wired mine in. And uh, as I said, as long as these match on the outside, the color code, if they're color coded, that's awesome. If not, then uh, just match them to the outside. So in other words, if the outside says two, and it's and in, in here you got the black one running to it, make sure outside it's on two, the black one's going to it. If, you know, on one it's red, outside make sure it's the, the red is going to the one. So uh, that's basically it on the wiring on the inside. So I need to mount this up and feed everything out through the hole up there and have it set in place. All right, so there it is. It's up there. It's mounted on the inside anyway. And uh, this front cover, if you pop it open, you can see it, uh, the wiring is on there and uh, going to the outside. Everything's run. So now I'm going to go outside and start to hook up the wires out there and the line set. All right, so I'm back outside and uh, I, I got this unit, I got that pointed down. You want to be careful with this line set. When you bend this stuff, as I said earlier, you don't want to kink it, so just bend it really slow. But you're going to need to point it down so that we can screw on the rest of the line set onto here. We're going to need to tighten that onto here. And uh, I got the electric coming out. It's got this little plastic uh, round thing, so I went ahead and slid that over it and then on the inside of the wall to help protect it. That gets cut. But the next step I'm gonna, I need to do is uh, screw on the line set, which is right there, and connect the electrical. So I'm going to go ahead and do that next. Okay, so I got these top uh, bolts. I got the line set, the bolts all tightened up there. Be careful when you're screwing those on. Just take your time with them because they can strip out really easily on these here bolts. And I got to go get some... Uh, um, half-inch uh, things for this to, uh, for the wiring uh, because I got I got three-quarter inch which is too big to go up and screw in there so I just got those but I got them I got them uh, the wiring in I got it all uh, in the way it is this is from the I got to redo this line here but this is from the this side is coming from the pole from the from that box right there I obviously, I, I, I got to finish screwing this in together. And this is from the inside unit. Just make sure they match on the inside what they are. I'm gonna go back and double check and make sure my, because the wiring color code was off on mine. So I make sure you look at your instructions, follow that. And on the inside of the lid, it has it right here too. So that there, there shouldn't be no uh, problems there. Make sure you look at this uh, before you go to wire it up. And uh, so the next step, would be to, to vacuum it down and get all the air out of the lines and make sure it's all sealed up. So uh, I'll be right back. Okay, so I still got to do some finish up work on this, but right now I'm vacuuming it down, which is basically this whole line set needs to be uh, have all the air out of it. And it's also a good way to check for any leaks before you let the, the refrigerant out, the Freon flow to the system. So you use a little vacuum pump and you hook up to the this is the this is the um the low side but uh it's the only hookup we got here and uh it'll, it'll, it'll pull a vacuum so see it's going below zero and uh so i'm gonna let that run for like you know 10 15 minutes let it pull a vacuum and as long as it holds then i know i don't got no leaks and then i can let the refrigerant loose and it's all vacuumed out so some people uh, will use nitrogen and nitrogen test it first and then vacuum it out. But as long as it holds, uh, holds the vacuum, you know, uh, you know, you don't got no leaks. But uh, either way, that's basically what I'm doing now. 
So I got like 10, 15 minutes on that. And you don't, won't take anything really special. I'm just using this little $50 uh, unit vacuum pump here. And I think this was like 30 bucks. I can't remember. Like I said, I'll put all everything in the links in the description. So uh, uh, right now I'm just gonna let it uh, vacuum down and make sure it holds. And then I'm gonna have the, then I'm gonna let the, the, the refrigerant loose uh, once I know that the line, the line, uh, the line can hold the vacuum well. So I'll be back. Okay, so I was running it for a while, and as you can see, the it went below zero here. So and it's holding, and I've been letting it sit for I don't know at least five ten minutes uh, with the vacuum pump off and just sitting on there. And it hasn't lost no pressure. If it if it had lost any pressure, it would go back up to zero. So you would you know that it's that it's in a vacuum. So basically, at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and let the lines loose. Okay, so I let the lines loose and I top popped these caps off of here because inside of here is uh, you're gonna have to use an Allen key and uh, you're gonna have to let these loose, open these up. This is where all the freons at. So before you do this, make you know you want to make sure your line set is holding a vacuum all the way. Everything's hooked up. This is basically like one of the last things. I know I still got to wrap some tape around this, make it look a little more presentable, which I'm gonna do. Uh, that's more cosmetic than anything really but and I still need uh, to go down to Home Depot or uh, someplace and get some half inch uh, uh, things to hook up for this too which I'm gonna go do but basically this will let the Freon or the refrigerant into the systems so you only want to do this once you're positive and you got a vacuum and you got no leaks it's, it's pretty much a last step so you just turn them and you'll just open them up to the left and it'll it'll let it in. Give it a few good turns. I want to do both of them. And that basically lets all the refrigerant into the system. So see that came out all the way right there. And once you do this, it's a good idea. You know, just in case those valve stems leak or anything, screw these on and then uh, tighten them down with the with the with the wrench, or get them kind of stuck. Just in case those you know those valve stems sometimes they like to leak as they age too or whatever. But that's basically it. Uh, next step would be uh, to basically test it out, which I'll be doing next. Okay, so I, I got it on and it's it's cooling down. I got it on 65 right now. It's got this little remote. It's pretty cool. You got this little. Uh, Right up there, showing the temperature right on the unit. I didn't even see that until, until it came on. That's pretty cool. And it, it's blowing out. I'm going to show you the outside, how that's running. And here it is out here. It's running. I don't know if you could hear it very much. Not making too much noise. But that's basically it. I, I am going to have to finish up a few things. I, I need to finish running that water cable down right here. And I need to wrap it all in tape real good. They also have these covers that, these things that go right on it that'll cover it real nice if you like. And uh, here, as you can see the way I did this line, I don't know if I showed you that before. I just uh, left it in a circle coming in. But that's basically it. That's uh, how to hook up one of these uh, Pioneer mini splits, which is not very difficult really in the end. Uh, as long as you're a handy person and you do things yourself. But if you have any questions, ask me and I'll try to answer them.